Hi guys. Well, it is a pleasant late spring evening. One week to go in the spring of 2021. That would make it Monday, June 14th, 2021. And uh, I'm enjoying an Angry Orchard crisp apple cider. So if Angry Orchard wants to send me some money for giving them a product placement, they know where to find me, but it is a pleasant Monday night, and I have not been on the mainstream media for, good Lord, when was I last on the mainstream media, but uh, I'll change that here at dark. It is 9.30 at night, and just now getting dark as Ithaca, New York. Well, I hear all about these heat waves. I think we're heading into the 40s tonight in the middle of June, but we'll talk about heat waves in a minute. Uh, we're just going to run down. Uh, I could turn any one of these into a full video. So we have some sad news, guys. The head of the world's largest family dies in India, leaving behind 39 wives and 94 children. It is time to bid farewell to clueless moron Ziona Chana. Yes, a man believed to have the world's largest family with 94 children. So far, 33 grandchildren. Uh, kiss the clueless moron goodbye. However, there is some dispute as to whether Mr. Chana was the head of the world's largest family as one Canadian man, one Canadian man, who would have thought it, has allegedly fathered 150 children. And uh, so I think that is a great lead up to the letters to the editor in the LA Times, hallelujah, from the opinion page of the LA Times yesterday, <clears throat> reversing population growth, reversing population growth is our only chance to fight global warming. I think I might have mentioned this absolute, uh, maybe it was below my contempt this long story they did, you know, one of these many stories about how slowing population rates were the end of the world that everyone was hopping on last week, including the LA Times. So this is, we're going to hear from Alert Reader, uh, what is this guy's name? John LaGrange. John LaGrange, who is a teacher Good for this is, uh, no, I'm, I'm not sure if he's a teacher. Anyway, John LaGrange has this to say <clears throat> to the editor. A careful reading of UC Riverside professor Jade S. Sasser's piece questioning the link between population growth and climate change leaves the reader wondering if it is intentionally misleading that is exactly what it is. It is intentionally misleading. It is the single biggest lie this side of the bright green lie. I anybody acting like there, there is no link between too many people and too many uh, greenhouse gases being emitted uh, is a liar. They are a clueless moron, or in this person's case, they are a bold-faced liar. That is exactly what they are. It is intent being intentionally misled. We're going to wrap up uh, this rant with that subject. Does the author, you know, this UC Riverside professor, really not understand the difference, the difference between absolute 
population growth and the rate of population growth. She notes that the rate of growth is the lowest since at least 1900, but neglects to mention that while the U.S. population increased by 1.49 million uh, from 1900 to 1901, it increased by 1.64 million from 2019 to 2020. Yes. <clears throat> Sasser quotes the United Nations statistics that world population is growing at a slower rate than at any time since 1950, but she does not report the fact that world population increased by 46.72 million people in 1950 when the growth rate was higher than it is now, but added 81.76 million people in 2018. Huh. Given the size of these population increases, it is hard to understand how the author can claim that they don't matter. Thank you, uh, John Lee Grange, pointing out the big lie. Uh, let's see. Let's just look at a few of... Uh, we're going to do some climate change things. We're going to start... Uh, we're going to start in the Rocky Mountains. We're not even going to go all the way to the West Coast. A couple of stories from the Rocky Mountain states. This one from the, the conversation. Climate change is making Rocky Mountain forests more flammable now than at any time in the past 2,000 years. The exceptional drought in the U.S. West has people across the region on edge after the record-setting fires of 2020. Last year, Colorado alone saw its three largest fires in recorded state history, one burning late in October and crossing the barren continental divide well above the tree line. Those fires did not just feel extreme, Evidence now shows the 2020 fire season pushed these ecosystems to levels of burning unprecedented for at least 2,000 years. That evidence, which is described in this study published today, serves as a sobering example of how climate change is altering the ecosystems on which lives and economies depend. A previous study, nearly a decade ago, warned that by the mid-21st century, climate warming could increase burning past historical levels and transform some Rocky Mountain forest. Our results show such changes in fire activity are now underway. And uh, I won't go in, and I won't even do the story with all of the temperature records getting ready to fall uh, in the U.S. West uh, in the last few days of the spring of uh, 2021. 117 degrees uh, in Vegas, I believe, tomorrow is the forecast 117 it's not even the first day of summer yet and you wonder why the rocky mountains like uh california and the pacific northwest are going to be a firestorm this uh winter but we're gonna go look at a state we rarely talk about here idaho Idaho's ongoing drought halts some irrigation months early. This is drawing dots between 
climate change and the uh, food crisis and the price of food and all the rest of it, water managers are cutting off irrigation flows to farmers in Idaho's Wood River Basin and wildlife officials are scrambling to move fish to safer waters as a severe drought grips the area. Farmers got 27 days of water this year before the magic, I love it, the magic reservoir, I love that name, the magic reservoir reached 4% capacity, prompting uh, the water company to shut off the water on Thursday. The reservoir feeds about 36,000 acres of farmland. This is the canal company's shortest irrigation se season since at least 1977. Typically, the dam is not closed until mid-September. And meanwhile, roughly 80% of Idaho is experiencing drought conditions. And then uh, when he, it really starts to get... To get weird here. Um, the department plans to electrofish, to electrofish some sections of the canal this week to remove fish and restock them elsewhere. The method involves applying an electric current into the water to stun and collect fish. Anyone else uh, other than these wildlife managers electrocuting fish to save them from, uh, from the drought, anyone else with a valid fishing license can gather fish in the river using any method except firearms, chemicals, explosives, or the aforementioned electric current, limits on the number of trout that can be harvested have been listed. Quote, the goal is to get the fish out of there and take them home and put them in the freezer versus dying when the water is gone. And then they uh, take you to the story drought stricken Joshua tree closes trail to hikers to save thirsty bighorn sheep. I believe the guy that we never mention on this channel has a PhD, you know, the guy who has never taken a climate uh, change uh, course in his life that I'm aware of, uh, got his PhD in desert bighorn sheep management. So finally, Maybe you can go on to some other channel in the Doomosphere and that man can actually talk about something uh, he knows about, which is desert sheep horn management. So uh, maybe he wrote the story, I don't know, about managing, you know, drought-stricken, thirsty, desert bighorn sheep. All right, but let's leave our own, let's go over to France, many of these stories about uh, glacier blood. I love that term, glacier blood, for a uh, new term for the collapse. French scientists have recorded a rise in alpine snow turning from white to red, warning the color shift could be a marker of accelerating climate change. Yes, uh, locals call the phenomenon Song de Glacier, or glacier blood, while others dub it watermelon snow. Uh, the pinker shade of white is caused by blooms of normally invisible algae. Uh, Researchers say they change color to protect themselves from ultraviolet light 
and that they may be proliferating due to global warming. Do you think so? Uh, and of course, we can expect more glacier blood. I've already done uh, around about sea snot. I don't need to repeat the sea snot with, uh, in Turkey. My God, have you seen the photos of the sea snot, the glacier blood, the uh, electrocuted fish to save them? Uh, guys... All right, let's get the latest update on the infamous. We can go down to uh, Australia for the latest update on the infamous uh, Pine Island Glacier in Antarctica. Ice shelf holding back Antarctica's Pine Island Glacier is breaking up. Hmm. The Pine Island Glacier on the West Antarctic ice sheet is responsible for more than a quarter of Antarctica's contribution to sea level rise over the past decades. Now a new study shows that it is more vulnerable to rapid melting than thought. Hmm. Because climate change is weakening its natural breaking system, breaking in this case B R A K I N G. Why it matters? At stake is the future of a glacier containing about 160 trillion tons of ice, which, if it were all to melt into the ocean, would cause about 1.6 feet of global sea level rise. But book hermit, come on and tell everybody that it ain't going to happen for 500 years. But, uh, anyway, what do you need to go poop or what? Why are you so squirmy? Why are you such a little wiggle worm? So, is it pop? You're not supposed to be doing doing this at 9.30 at night. It's past my bedtime. We're going to do one more. Okay. One more. One more story. Good Lord. Sancho Panza does not like ranting after his bedtime. We're going to go over. Uh, I love this. Uh, not surprisingly, we're going to uh, go over to Fox News to learn about brainwashing. You know, when Fox News does a story about brainwashing people, uh, you should probably listen to them. <clears throat> North, Korean de North Korean defector says, quote, even North Korea was not this nuts, close quote, after attending Ivy League school. I was hoping it was Cornell, but uh, no. Uh, an America, as American educational institutions continue to be called into question, a North Korean defector fears the United States' future, quote, is as bleak as North Korea, close quote, after she attended one of the country's most prestigious universities. Uh, this is Yeonmi Park. Uh, Yeon, she is age 27 and she just finished a stint at Columbia University and reports to Fox News that she was deeply disturbed by what she found at Columbia. <clears throat> Quote, I expected that I was paying this fortune all this time and energy to learn how to think. But they are forcing you to think the way they want you to think. I realized, wow, this is insane. I thought America was different 
but I saw so many similarities to what I saw in North Korea that I started worrying. Yes. Um, anyway, uh, they break this all down, uh, but I want to get down to her, uh, her full-on rant uh, talking about uh, issues surrounding gender and language, you know, all these gender correct pro pronouns. Uh, it was chaos. It felt like the regression in civilization. Even North Korea is not this nuts. North Korea was pretty crazy, but not this crazy. After getting into a number of arguments with professors and students, eventually Yeoni, quote, learned how to just shut up, close quote, in order to maintain a good GPA and graduate. Yes. Uh, and then they tell her story, talk about entitled a little whiny Americans. Uh, okay, now getting back to her thoughts on uh, her experience uh, at Columbia University. Uh, she accused American higher education institutions of stripping people's ability to think critically. Yes. <clears throat> Quote, the people here, meaning in the U.S., are just dying to give their rights and power to the government. That is what scares me the most. In North Korea, you know, back when she was a little girl, I literally believed that my dear leader, you know, that little maggot Kim Jong-un, was starving. He's the fattest guy. How could anyone believe that? And then somebody showed me a photo and said, look at him. He's the fattest guy. Other people are all thin. And I was like, oh my God, why did I not notice that he was fat? Because I never learned how to think critically. <coughs> that meaning the, you know, the inability to think critically, that is what is happening in America. People see things, but they have just completely lost the ability to think critically. Yes. <clears throat> Witnessing the depth of Americans' ignorance up close has made Yeoni question everything about humanity. Yes. Quote, <coughs> North Koreans, we don't have internet. We don't have access to any of these great thinkers. We don't know anything. But here, while having everything, people choose to be brainwashed. And then they deny it. Do you think so? Uh, you guys, meaning Americans, you guys have lost common sense to a degree that I, as a North Korean, cannot even comprehend. Where are we going from here? There is no rule of law, no morality, nothing is good or bad anymore. It is complete chaos. There you go. The view from a North Korean being interviewed by Fox News just when you thought the mainstream media could not get any stranger. We have that. And the little dog is very happy to hear this rant is over. 
And you can go back to bed now. You can go back to sleep and dream of your little chippies. Get out there and enjoy your chaos while you still can. Bye, guys. Yes, you little wiggle worm. Jesus. All right. Pop, I'm back in bed where I want to live.